Hello. Hello, how are you doing? God bless you. Welcome in, guys. Hi. Please tell us where you're from. Stacy and Harvey. Hello, Stacy. Hi, Bridget. Welcome in, Curly Christian. Kathy Jackson, God bless you. Nadia Franklin, God bless you, Nadia. Good to see you. Good to have you in. Hallelujah. God bless you all. God bless you all. Everyone who is watching, who's tuned in to us. Uh, I hope you guys caught our exciting teaching um, on dream interpretation. I see Ms. Harleen on on 102.7 or 1027 FM. Yes. Yes, the rhythm. It was really a powerful teaching. Amen. Today on today. And uh, we're going to be doing part four tomorrow. Tanyeri Gay Blessings. Malvado. Yes, all the way from Swaziland. Man, Swaziland is so far away. I think it's, it's right now, it's probably about one o'clock over there or two o'clock in the morning. That's what I'm saying, man. Ivana Strong. God bless you. Welcome in. Today, we just want to give thanks and praise for the Resurrection Day. The Resurrection Day of the Lord. Amen. He is the reason for the season. Without Him, there is no life. Amen. Kim Outen is on. Hallelujah. Praise God for everyone that's watching right now today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. He is risen, and that's the reason I see Nichelle next. I haven't seen you for a while, Nichelle. It's always good to see you. Praise God. Um, yeah, you know, God, in His power and His wisdom, was telling us all through the Bible, this is what's going to happen. Amen? If you destroy this temple, I will build it in three days. Amen? They didn't understand. Shannon Thomas, all the way from Trinidad, and Dwayne Richardson. God bless you, Dwayne. Many people don't understand when God speaks, He speaks to us in parables and riddles. Because He wants He wants us to, to dig deep into the meaning. I mean, that's the thing in the in the Middle East and in those Eastern countries. They always give you a riddle or a coin or a poem or a proverb to provoke thought, amen? To read into the deeper meaning of what it is and sometimes they would give you riddles and they would tell you truths cloaked in and enigmas because they wanted sometimes for you to find out then sometimes they wanted to veil the truth from you until you reach the level of maturity but it will send you on a journey amen joanna turner uh, Jonia uh, turner welcome on welcome in hallelujah hallelujah i said carry on all the way from Jamaica is in. Hallelujah. I was in Jamaica several years back. Man, I didn't want to come home. It was so beautiful. And really enjoyed it. You know, the rivers and stuff, man. You know, and how it reached the sea and, you know, the people there. And it was really just beautiful. We were in Ocho Rios and I think we was in Montego Bay. And really nice. You know, we think about it fondly. Amen. So today we're talking about Christ, the reason for the season. Amen. Who is this King Jesus? He never fought a war. He never wrote a book. Amen? As a matter of fact, he died between two thieves. His own people turned on him. The Romans crucified him. Yet, no man has changed the world like this Jesus. Who is this Jesus? They either love him or they hate him. All around the world, people serve him. Billions of people serve him. Yet, he was never a general of an army. He came with a simple message, preaching love in the kingdom. He came with a simple message. I see Brakel, Denisha, and Sonia is on. God bless you guys. Come on in, come on in. Who is this King Jesus? Wise men still seek him out. Men still follow him. What an example. Every religion in the world has good platitudes, good rules, good regulations, 
disciplines, but none of them, none of them ever was able to say of a certainty and a surety that they were raised from the dead. They were raised from the dead. See, that's the difference. Those religious leaders, you know, Zarasta, Buddha, Confucius, and all the other ass, they're still in their grave. But the king of kings and lord of lords, he raised from the grave. He was resurrected. His blood still speaks today of better things. And today we want to celebrate his life, not just on one day, but we need to make that every day. Amen? It should be all year long. We should celebrate his life all year long. You know, some people just do it as a religious ceremony. They just do it one day out of the year. And, you know, that's it. They've, they've done their due diligence. They've done their due diligence. They've done their duty. And now they can get around. Uh, they can go on with the rest of their life doing whatever they want to do. But every day, we need to give our utmost to the highest. Amen? Every day, we need to thank God uh, for what He's done through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? He was beaten, punished, shamed. The scripture says no man has known the shame and embarrassment that he has known. I'm just paraphrasing it. No man has been so disfigured, so torn up, that even his own didn't receive him. And on top of that, his closest friends in his moment of crisis and moment of helplessness, they all ran from him. John, all right, Peter, Judas, who was eating bread on his own soup, on his own table, sat with him. Yet he turned him over to his captors. Amen. Oh my God, what a story. Amen. I can imagine them. All hope was gone. All hope was lost. You know, they thought the story was over. But this was programmed because the scripture says, Amen. Before the foundation of the world, Amen. He'd already went to Calvary. Amen. Before the foundation of the world. Amen. He was already slain as a lamb. Amen. He was already the sacrifice. He was already, already the perpetuation for sin. Before the foundation of the world. So even through the corridors of time. Space, time, continuum and matter. He already looked into the four with his foreknowledge into the future and he saw that he had to be sacrificed so he was already slain from the foundation of the world he was the lamb of god already set apart and then he had to walk through it it was already done it was a done deal hallelujah what he's done for us we could never pay him the debt of gratitude and this and the and the uh and the things he's done for us many of us some of us should have been dead by now some of us should have been in jail if our enemies had their way and their will amen some of us would have already been buried some of us would have been out of our mind some of us should have been i mean in jail locked up if the enemy had his way with us but the lord the lord himself by his death, burial, and resurrection didn't allow it because his blood was speaking for us. His blood was talking for us. The blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary, that precious blood, that sinless man who didn't have to do that, did it for us because he looked at your face, but he looked at your heart and saw your need. His love wouldn't allow him to stay on Calvary, as uh, stay in, in heaven, but would come down on Calvary and die a sinner's death. A common criminal, the king of glory. He went to the place of the skull, and then he had to carry his cross. And then they had to, they had to uh, uh, send help because he couldn't carry it. It was too heavy. All right? And the Ethiopian helped him. Simon of Cyrene. They carried the cross. 
to Golgotha. Golgotha means the place of the skull, the place of crucifixion. The Romans were expert at crucifixion. They were experts at torturing people. They were experts at making you suffer because people look at the cross and they think that's so poetic. They look at the cross and think it's so romantic. But to be up there on that cross, amen, there was a slow, horrible death. As a matter of fact, you would pray for a quick death, but it didn't allow you to die just like that. It made you suffer. It punished you. It, it caused you not to be able to breathe. Then they pierced through your wrist. They pierced through your, your feet. And then when you didn't die before time, they would break your legs. Then they would stab you in your heart with a spear after you've punished for so long. That's what they did to our Messiah. But before they did that, that, that wasn't enough. They had to beat him into recognition. They used something called a whip, but the whip was like a cat of nine tail. But in the whip was, was something called a hook. It was like a hook. They looked like hooks. All right? Almost like hooks. What those hooks and prongs do, when they whip it, when they whip you with it, and they pull it back and they, and they flick it, it would, it would strike you. But what it would do too, it was a rip into your flesh and it would pull out and break the skin and it would cut deep into your body. And when they, when they gave you a couple of them, all right, I mean, it was literally like death, a scorpion sting. And they beat him with that until his flesh hung off. His flesh literally hung off. The cat, of nine, the, cat of, the cat of nine tails. The cat of nine tails. <laughs> Not nails. But yeah, they use nails and they use spikes and they use these hooks and these uh, type of um, not black, not glass bottles, but it was like a type of sharp metal that they used. And when they flick it, it ripped the skin. There were some some of the Roman soldiers who were expert at that. They were expert. They could break the skin and they could make you punish. They could tap uh, that thing right there and they, would, they could flick a fly off your shoulder. They knew how to punish you. And they knew how to inflict the maximum damage. And they did that to him. Not only did they do that to him, they mocked him. They ridiculed him. Yes, all of this, all of this for us. They crushed him under their weight of oppression. Amen? They mocked him. Then they took a crown. They made it out of thorns. Yes. And they pressed it in the skull. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine someone taking thorns, twisted it into a crown, and then pressing it into your skull? You hear me? And all the thorns were deep into his head. All right? Pushing the vessels. Yes, it was a morbid death and it was excruciating pain. It was agony beyond your wildest imagination. On top of that, his disciples them could not even pray with him one hour. Amen. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane, going through the worst battle of his night, the battle of shadows, the hour of shadows. They came for him at midnight. They knew the power of midnight. And they came for him at midnight. They came for him in the bewitching hour or the hour of shadows when the power of darkness was as strong as zenith or peak they came for the Christ and they took him by a kiss can you imagine one of your best friends or closest friends who for three years seeing you do miracles after miracles sign after sign wonders after wonders see the dead raised blind seeing Deaf hearing, seeing all manner of disease being healed, demon possessed people coming in their right mind, seeing heaven open, seeing a fish, the first fish caught, and there was money in it, and then so much other things that the Bible doesn't even mention. Can you imagine after seeing all of that, being there, being an eyewitness to his glory and his majesty, being in the inner circle? You know, the Lord had so much more disciples. But the twelve were the inner circle. 
Amen. He had so much more disciples, but the 12 were the ones who he poured into. He invested into. He said, how be it that 12 of you are my disciples, but one of you is a devil. One of you is a devil. The son of perdition. The son of perdition. There's a devil in the midst. There's human devils here. Right now, it's not changed. There are devils right here in flesh and blood. Human devils that are in your midst waiting to betray you. Waiting to, to sell you out. The minute it is inconvenient for them. The minute they feel that they can't manipulate you or control you. The minute they can't take from you. Because Judas was stealing. Judas was thiefing from the treasury. He was the treasurer for Christ's ministry. And he was stealing the money. Yet the Lord knew all of this. The Lord knew all of this and still let him stay because Judas had a plan and had a purpose to fulfill. Yes. Your betrayers, your backstabbers, your haters, your detractors, those who are coming against you without cause. They have a plan and a purpose to fulfill. They are pushing you into your next season. They are pushing you into purpose. They are going to keep you on your knees. They are going to keep you crying out to God. They are going to keep you in a secret place. But the Lord himself shall descend with a, with a, with a shout and the trump of God. The Lord is coming back saints. He's coming back. And he's coming back. For his bride the church. Yes. He's the one riding. On the white horse. Going forth to conquer. He's the one in revelation coming back. And this time. He's coming back with a sword in his hand. He's not coming back as a lamb. He's coming back as a mighty man of war. El Gabor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, a terrible, mighty warrior, is no longer the Lamb now, but you're going to see the Lion. You're going to see the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You're going to see the two-edged sword coming out of his mouth and destroying his enemies. He's going to use sound vibration power and the word. His mouth is a weapon. His mouth has a sword in it. His mouth shall slay his enemies. By a word he shall slay them. By his word he shall slay them. And it shall go forth as a sword. His voice shall be heard on many waters. Because he will come and right the wrongs. That have been done over 6,000 years ago. He's coming back with might and glory. But when he speaks. The whole earth will tremble. The whole universe will tremble when he speaks. Because he is the hand of God. He is God Almighty himself. And when he comes, the whole earth will rumble. The whole earth will quake at his might and glory. And they will see the thick and breasted one. They will see him as a mighty man of war. Arrayed in battle, battle gear. Ready to take on darkness. And he will speak the word. And the word shall go forth as a sword. And shall slay. The beast, the dragon, and the false prophet. With a word he shall resurrect the earth. With a word he shall resurrect all the dead. With a word they will go forth as a trump. He will go forth as a shofar. The word of God shall be made manifest and tangible. Because he is the culmination of the totality of God himself. He is God. And he is his son. And he is the Lamb of God. Who is also the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's coming to wage war on darkness. That's coming to wage war on those that hate him. And those that have waged war against the lamb. Those that are warring against the lamb. That's why we overcome by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of our testimony. And we love not our life unto death. Because we are looking forward to that glorious day. Death has lost its sting. Hell, death, and the grave has lost its power over us. 
It has lost its sting. It has lost its power because of the resurrection. He showed us that it is possible to conquer death, the last enemy of man. Death itself. Do you know that there are so many regions of hell? There's the bottomless pit. Then there's, there's Tartarus. Then there's the pit. Then there's paradise. There are different levels of hell. And hell is real. Hell is real. Hell is super hot. Hell was not made for humans. It was made for the devil and his angels. But hell is constantly enlarging itself. You hear me? It can never be satisfied. It's a place of utter horror. It's a place where you cannot even begin to imagine the horror, the outer darkness, the total darkness, and the absence of the presence and the power of God. Hell is also a mental place too. Many people are living in mental hell of their own making, but they don't have to because God, through His Son, Christ Jesus, Pay the price and reconcile us who was estranged from him and brought us back to him through his perpetuation and redemptive work on the cross. That's why when the old people used to sing those old songs, they carried so much power. That's why when those saints of old would say, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you, Satan. You felt that. You don't hear that no more. You don't hear those old saints like, they, like you used to. Because they knew the power of the blood. They knew the resurrection power of the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. And they would sing that. And people would get healed and delivered and set free. When they sang those songs and when they prayed in that name. That name is above every name. Hallelujah. They would see amazing results. Because they knew how to get a hold of their God. Those that go to their God shall be strong. And shall do great exploits. Amen. I remember one day to say, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you, Satan. Get behind me. I remember. And there was power that came from them. I felt it as a child. I felt it when I was growing up. I knew those words carried power. And they believed it and they knew it. There should be a famine in the land. There's going to come a famine in the land. It shall not be for food or for drink, but it shall be for the word of God. Don't you see how the enemy is removing the blood you hardly hear the blood of Jesus Christ anymore. You don't hear it anymore in churches. You hear prosperity. You hear abundance. You hear claim it, name it. But you don't hear the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't hear the word of God like you used to. You hear in a different gospel. But it's not the gospel that Christ died for. It's not the bride. It's not the bride's gospel. Amen. He died for this gospel. We have been bought up with the blood of Jesus. Now we hardly hear it. It's become a thing of the past. And when we do say it, it carries no power because there's no real belief behind it. Lord, take us back to the place where we believed in the blood of Jesus. Lord, take us back to the place where we first knew you. God, take us back to the place where we understood the compelling power of the blood of Jesus. Don't you know that Satan hates the blood of Jesus Christ? Because if principalities and powers knew what they were doing when they crucified the Son of God, they would never have done that. They overplayed their hands. And the blood that was spilled, the blood that was spilled, oh God Almighty, it makes him tremble with a believer who knows and understands the power of the blood. There was power in the blood. There is power in the blood. And he died so you can have this resurrection power. You can move in resurrection knowledge. You can move in resurrection wisdom. You can be resurrected from dead works, dead things. Things that, 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 that left you down and out and hopeless and, and downtrodden and oppressed. The Lord said you don't have to be that way because of my blood. My blood was shed for you. For the redemption of many, I've become a curse. So no man have to suffer under curse. Yet we still do not appropriate and make that our own. We say it because we know it by route. But we've watered it down to the point where it just becomes another platitude or saying. We say it but there's no power behind it. 
Yes, we have nice words and fancy words and eloquence. But give me one saint, give me one man of God who knows the blood of Jesus Christ and knows how to get a hold of God. He might not even be able to put two sentences together. But those saints, some of them couldn't even read. But oh my God, they had power because they understood the blood and the resurrection power. And it was a living reality to them. It was not just some far off thing. It was a living, breathing reality to them. And they appropriated the word of God because they recognized that it was real and alive and tangible and palpable. And they understood that the foundation stone, the cornerstone, the keystone of the whole universe was Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, the anointed one, the charisma. He is the power of the universe. Hallelujah. And because he died, was buried, went into Hades, hell, Tartarus, the pit. He went into the regions of the dam and fought against the powers of darkness and fought against death. Yes, he stripped death too. Death has lost its sting and lost its power. Yes. Now it's a blessing to die. Because, I mean, it was you in Christ. You just changed in suit. <laughs> you just changed in another suit. You just changed in another dimension. You just go to sleep for a little while. Because it's a blessing to die in Him. Hallelujah. Are you getting this, guys? Are you getting this? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Lamb, according to Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. They overcame him, hallelujah. Him meaning Satan. And they loved not their lives unto death. Many people died and suffered for this gospel we listen, we're listening to right now, hearing that we take for granted, that we play with. Amen? Tyndales and, 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 and so many uh, men of God, Wycliffe and all those, they died. Some of them, horrible death for the preservation of this word. Amen? So the blood of Jesus Christ has removed us from the curse of the law. It has brought back and redeemed our stolen birthright to be sons of God. It has provision. It has protection. It has prosperity. It has to be peculiar to be a chosen generation and a holy nation. I now draw the bloodline around you and all that pertains to you. Amen? This guy... He was a farmer. Many years ago, he was a farmer. And um, they had all these snakes and fox and, and, and wild animals eating up all their farms. I mean, all their livestock, sorry. And um, every one of those guys who had farms were going bankrupt. And they were trying all these things, but they couldn't stop the snakes and the, the beasts from eating uh, their, you know, their livestock, their chickens and, and what have you, turkeys and, and, uh, um, and, and their animals. So this guy, he got a revelation of what the blood of Jesus Christ could do. And so he drew a bloodline around his farm. And he challenged the powers of darkness that was eating his supply to not come there. Amen? And he drew it around his whole farm. Do you know that when he did that, all of the other farmers, they laughed at him. They laughed at him to scorn. Because God showed it to him in a dream to draw the bloodline around his home, around his house. But guess what? When he went out there, none of his stuff was, was touched. None of his animals were touched. You hear me? None of his animals were touched. Every single animal that tried to cross the bloodline to kill those animals, they were dead at the perimeter of the bloodline. They were dead at the perimeter of the bloodline. You hear me? The fox. The snakes. The wolves. All the predators that would come and steal were dead when they crossed the bloodline. I draw the bloodline around you and all that pertains to you today. Your home, your possessions, your promotions, your elevation. They could not touch the bloodline. 
that had been drawn apart around his home. All of the other farmers, they went bankrupt. They laughed at him. Maybe people are laughing at you now because Christianity is not popular. I guarantee you, you go. You want to see people clear out a place? Just say, hey, listen, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord and Jesus Christ coming again. Oh, they'll say, oh, you're one of them. Oh, and they will clear out right away. Many people hide their faith because they don't want to know. They don't want nobody to know they are Christian because they don't want to become unpopular. Oh, you what are them? You Christian? Oh, you can't come to that club then. You can't. You can't hang with us. You know. Oh, you you Christian? Oh, you are them holy people. And so they don't want to be laughed at or ridiculed. They want acceptance. They want you know pure acceptance. All right. And so they will hide their faith. Amen. Peter said, "I will build you, Lord." Until the end. And he said this day Peter. Before the cock crows three times. Thrice. You will have denied me. He said never. 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 And just as it happened. When they were taking him to Golgotha. A woman said hey. I know you. You was with him. He said no no it ain't me. The other man said I know you. You were with the Nazarene. No it ain't me. Somebody else point up and say, yes, you, 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 yeah, I know you. He said, Amy. And just as he did that, Christ passed by and looked at him in his eye. And that's how he broke down and started hollering and screaming. Because he knew that he had failed a test. He knew that the enemy had sifted him like wheat. That's why sometimes it is the Lord's intercessory ministry that is saving us from being sifted like wheat. Many times Satan asks for us. Many times Satan has asked for our marriage, our ministry, our health, our children, our business, and our life. And many times the Lord had prayed for us. Yes, he's taken up his perfect work in heaven. Even in heaven, he still isn't resting. He's the great high priest of our confession. He's the bishop of our soul. Even in heaven, he still is not sitting down passively watching. He's actively Actively pursuing us and guiding us by his Holy Spirit. And is forever representing us in the courts of heaven. When the accuser of the brethren comes before the Almighty God. And asks for our heads and asks for our destruction. He is there as our advocate. As our lawyer. And he fights for us. Because he says my blood is sufficient father. My blood is sufficient. I died for him. I died for her. I say that this case is squashed. This case is finito. This case is done. This case is thrown out. My blood, Father. My blood. Look at my blood. Look what I suffered. Look what I did. Look what I did. Look what I be, uh, uh, would be felt me. Look, Father. Look. And the Lord himself, the King of glory, and God himself, looks at it and says, yes, they are covered. Perfect justice, perfect righteousness. He had to endure the wrath of God. Yes, until he was satisfied. Amen. He bruised Christ like a conch. You ever see someone beating a conch? Man, I feel sorry for those conch sometimes. Man, he's getting beaten. I mean, he's eating. But when you see someone being bruised, he was bruised for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon his head. He took a beating. No man suffered. No man suffered the way he did. Every last prophecy in the word of God that ensured he was the Messiah came to pass. It couldn't be chance. It was billions upon billions of, 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 uh, of, of time and billions and billions of, of um, what they call it when, when you can't, uh, the, the, um, you, know, you can't get it. Uh, it have to be so much billions of a billions of a percentage for it to come to pass. He was spot on with all of those. It was like, it was like, he couldn't even rearrange that if he tried to. It was literally written about him. He says, "Lo, I come in the volume, of the book. It is written of me. I am he. I am him. I am the one that everybody spoke of. Yet they recognized him not. The Bible says he came to his own, and they didn't recognize him. He came to his own, and they didn't see him. They didn't recognize the time of their visitation. Lord, help us to recognize the time of our visitation." Lord, help us to see when you're coming to us 
and God not spurn you or cast you away because you may come to us in a different way that is unrecognizable. And you may come in pomp and majesty and glory. You may come simple and humble. And you may come as a thief in the night. Help us to be aware of who you are, Lord, and who you're using to try and, Father God, uh, contact us and have relationship with us. Help us to see. Help us to see, Lord. Help us to know when you are speaking to us, even through circumstances, situation, people, or things. Help us to recognize the still small voice of when you're speaking to us. I'm declaring to you right now that you should not be afraid to share your testimony because God did so much for you. He was able to take that beating for you. He was able to take that thrashing for you. He was able to take your sickness away. Yes, by stripes you are healed. Curse as anyone hangs on a tree. Amen? God took lupus away from you. God took diabetes, AIDS, cancer, back pain, fibroids, blindness, evil dreams, his life, resurrection, and his administration even in the heavenly courts. See that the right of the power as the high priest of our intercession, making intercession for us right now. Yet, we don't even want to share our testimony. Yet, we still don't want to say, look what the Lord did for us. We want to say everything else, but if we did it ourselves, yeah, you know, I was just planning, and then I planned this, and then as I planned it, you know, it worked out well for me. But you didn't say how God blessed you and let a prophet speak to your life and call a thing forth. Oh, yes, I went and I built it up, and then after many times, we started the plan, and we worked the plan, and the plan was good. And then, you know, yeah, you got to be positive, you know, you got to think, you got to think right, and you got to do that. Yes, that's true too. But remember that it was God who spoke that through a man or woman of God. That's why your project now, some of your projects stuck now. Because you glorifying man and you wouldn't give God no glory. You wouldn't say that God did it for you. That's why some of your projects right now all bind right up. Huh? I know someone who didn't want to give God glory. And, you know, they didn't want to even say God blessed them and God did this for them. Alright? I said, man, you know, you need to, you need to share a testimony and give God the glory. And they didn't want to do it. Alright? They made some stuff. No, no, no. Uh, uh, that didn't happen like that. And several weeks later, they get just about all their teeth knocking them out. Alright? Got all their teeth knocking them out. So let me tell you something. When God is blessing you, when God has done a work for you, when God has, 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 has shown you mercy and kindness and grace when you didn't deserve it, when they want to destroy you, and now God is blessing you, God is elevating you, and now you want to play the harlot, that's what the children of Israel always did. They always did that. God would get them out of trouble, and then they would go right back in their own uh, uh, muck and mire. They would go back into the mud. They would go back into their own sin. They will begin to play with false gods and idols. And then God will send them back into slavery. Amen. Then they will get out. They will cry to the Lord. They will come back. And they will go right back to that foolishness. Right back to the old sorcery. Right back to the pagan gods. Right back to uh, everything that God says not to do. And so this became a revolving door. Where they were constantly being sold into slavery and come out and go back. It's like no generation learned the lesson. It's like they always went back to the follow to follow after the pagan gods. Are you guys getting this? We need the resurrection power of God that lies every day. We need God to resurrect our heal, our health. We need God to resurrect our healing. We need God to resur resurrect our ministry. Some of our ministries has been shut down because of what was said and done against the ministry. Some of our ministries has become ineffective and some of our ministries have lost its power. Some of us have lost the fuel and fire. We started off good. We started off running. But because we ran ahead of God and didn't apply the blood, didn't stay and recognize that we are, we are, we are fighting a battle but we cannot fight on our own. We need God's strength. So we ran ahead of the Lord fighting this battle. Not acknowledging the King of Kings. Or following his laws and ordinances. And his advice. And his commands. Especially when he's speaking to us. Amen. And so we've left off. And so some of us find that now we are burned out. We are burned out. 
because we didn't follow God's command. Some of us need to take some days off and go and refresh our life. We need the blood conviction. We need to get saved all over again. We need to say, Lord, you need to do something with my life because I've left my first love. I no longer have the zeal for the Lord. I've been worn down. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. You know, I've lost my first love. I've become bitter, envious. I've become someone who doesn't really celebrate and are happy when others are being blessed. I used to be like that way. I used to be so happy. Now I find myself being resentful because I have not entered into that place in a long time. Yes, I have the outward appearance of it. Yes, I have the smile. Yes, I can say the right thing. Yes, I know church lingo. Yes, I know how to twirl and I know how to say shaba, 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 shaba. But I do not have the resurrection power of the Christ living in me anymore. I do not have the power of the Holy One. I do not have the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. I used to have His joy. Now I find myself getting anxious and I find myself getting stressed out. I find myself doing things simply because I want to fill the void. Because I don't want to look at my life and come back to the cross. Amen? I don't want to carry my cross or my burden anymore. I want to be on easy street. And I don't want to do what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to spend time with you no more. I spend time, just maybe two, three minutes to ease my conscience. I haven't prayed to you in years. I can't tell the last time I really looked at the Bible. But yet I want your power. I want your might. I want your glory. But I don't really want you. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You have to have intimacy with the Lord. You have to want Him. Even as the day pants after the water, so does my soul long after thee. This was David's, this was David's cry. Amen? This was David's anthem to the Lord. My soul long after you. My soul panted after you. My soul long after you as a deer pants after the water. Amen? I am breathless for you. I am pursuing hard after you. I am running hard after you. I am chasing hard after you. I don't care. Just give me King Jesus. Because the deceitful of the riches will come. We are trying to make all this money and get all the success. And that is good in its proper place. But look how people die and leave, their they leave the money, they leave all those funds. I've seen people fighting over funds. They were left fortunes and the family ripping each other apart. I've seen people leave buildings and houses and cars and you know all sorts of property and land. And guess what? Someone raised up in the family and they all belong to them. And they fight the rest of the people for the inheritance. They're people who are taking each other to court, trying to kill each other over, over property and land, over filthy lucre, over money. These things are temporary. All right? The moth and the rust of the world will corrupt these things. They are temporary. But store up treasure in heaven where moth and, and rust get it corrupted. It's eternal treasure. What you do for Christ will last. Even though you suffer persecution, you will get a hundredfold in this life and in the next. Even though you suffer persecution, you will get a hundredfold blessing in this next. If you leave mother, father, daughter, and son for me, you will get one and full return. Amen? But you will suffer persecution. But you will get it also in the next. Because this world is filled. Alright? Filled with, with, with just hate. Alright? Hate, ambiguity, selfishness, greed. Greed, jealousy, animosity, ambivalence. Amen? So God is saying, when I bless you, you can be you can be doing you can be doing well, but you will be hated for it. I'll bless you in this world, and you'll have much, but people will despise you for it. Huh? You never see nobody chasing after a loser. You don't see them celebrating a loser, All right? They celebrate winners. Why? Because the world loves winners. The world loves someone who is able to discipline their body, beat their body down make the necessary sacrifice, and win the prize. Alright? We too must fight for the prize. But our prize is to win God's approval to say, Well done, the good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen? You've been 
faithful over a few. I'll make you a ruler over many. You've been faithful over what I've given you to do. And now here, enter into my joy. Eyes are not seen, nor ears heard. What is what the Lord has prepared for man? Nor is it entered in his heart what he's going to do for him. Amen? We don't even know what God is about to do for us. And many of us have a uh, great imagination. All right? You can imagine and you can see certain things, but you can't even comprehend the depth of what God is going to do. It's un incomprehensible. You cannot comprehend what he has in store for you. You cannot begin to understand what he has set up for you. He is rooting for you. The great crowd of witnesses rooting for you. And we have, we have prophetic, all right, prophetic intercessors that you don't even know that's picking you up in the spirit. You didn't get here on your own. Someone was praying for you. Whether it be a grandmother, a mother, a cousin, a friend, or someone God has put on, uh, put on their heart to pray for you. Someone could be in China. You don't know. They pray for you in the tongues. They don't even know they're praying. Amen? Hallelujah. But we have to acknowledge and recognize that it's only by the grace of God and by His power. Amen? By His power and by His light and by His love. We have to recognize that it is all about resurrection. If Christ had not been resurrected from the grave, we all might as well just go play basketball or football. Amen? Because our faith would have been in vain. If Christ has not been resurrected from the dead, and if you don't believe that, you need to get saved again. And you need to ask God to give you a revelation on that because you might as well go play soccer. You know, go play soccer. Go play basketball. Go play golf. You know, go golf, man, or whatever. You know, play backgammon. Because this is the reason why we are so different from every other religion. You could, you could go to a, 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 a place where they have diversity, of religion, and the minute you the minute you record you you say you're a Christian or you talk about Jesus, they turn hostile towards you. Why? Because they don't understand what is happening. But the powers that be that are operating through them knows it, and it terrifies them because they know that the time of their judgment is at hand. They know that there's something different, and they don't want to come to Christ as the only mediator. You cannot get to God any other way. I don't care what you try to do. You cannot get to God through any means necessary. There's not many paths to God. There's one path to God and that's through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's not a popular statement these days because they want to take many paths to God. Amen? They want to find any which way. They want to do their righteous work. They want to do their good works. Alright? That still isn't enough to get you in. Because if you could do it by your works of righteousness, then it would not have been necessary for Christ to die. Amen? Your works of righteousness is as filthy rags, according to Scripture. Yeah. And that's when a woman have a cycle. That's what it really means. Alright? So God is saying that that is, that is basically unclean. You could be someone who gives to the poor. You could be someone who, I mean, you just feed thousands of people a week. And you don't want nothing in return. And that's a good thing. It's actually a very good thing. And it is really good. You, you're humanitarian. Amen? You, you have good moral character. But that still is not enough to get you into heaven. Amen? Someone who's a thief who died on the cross can say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. And they would have gotten into the kingdom before you even though they are actual scoundrels. Alright? They are, they are scoundrels. They know that they're thieves. They know that they you know, they're crooks. They know that they're terrible. They know that they're thugs. But they see the value. And he says, whosoever will let him come. And that's by extension, ex an uh, insult to Christ. The thing that your righteousness, your own holiness, could buy your way to heaven. Many men have tried. Amen. Good men have tried. They've tried the Buddhist part of self immolation and self, uh, self uh, 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 discipline. All right. Some of these guys can lay on a bed of nails, hot bed of nails, for days. Some of them guys could take themselves in the trance state where they could light themselves a fire and burn and be burned and sit right there and not make a sound. Some of these guys could go and sit out in the snow, you hear me? And they could actually go into their mind and change their body temperature so they could be hot on the inside. You hear me? Hallelujah. 
There's some guys who run thousands of miles. They call them the marathon monks. And that's the way of enlightenment and that's the way of salvation. There are some people who bury themselves on the ground and they eat poison and they flush themselves out. And then they drink poison again. Then they bury themselves again until their body is uh, purified of all, all uh, germs and all bacteria and parasites. And then they become living mummies. And then, they, and then they find out if they died, and if they died, if they have not decayed, then they go and they deify them and raise them again and put clothes on them. Because they've, 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 they've obtained uh, Nirvana. Alright? And they've come off the samsara or the wheel of reincarnation. That's what they try to do to gain salvation. You cannot win salvation by your own self. You cannot save your own self. It has to be a work of the cross. It has to be through Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Anything else is just folly. And Satan, being so clever, figured out ways to cause men to believe that they've entered into a different state. They entered into, into the good land or they enter into the Elysian fields because of the good deeds and because of self-immolation and self-discipline. Some people beat themselves. They, they beat themselves. There are certain people who they go in the corner of their room and they whip themselves to pieces. I mean, and they whip themselves hard. All right, till blood comes out. That's their way of, I guess, you know, disciplining their flesh <laughs> and also paying penance. But that's not the way to God. Amen? That's just self flagellation. But what I'm talking about is that. We already have that done through the Messiah, the one man called Jesus. And this is the reason why we preach what we preach today. Because we know of the hope of who we're waiting. Christ in you, Christ in me, the hope of glory. We have a hope inside of us. That's why it's not vain. That's not why it's sadistic. That's not why it's just, it's just you know, you know, just pure stoicism. All right? There were guys who thought they could reach heaven through Stoicism. They practiced being Stoics. Then there were people who were Epicureans who wanted just to eat, eat their way to heaven. All right? Gastronomy. They thought by dining on food, they could enter the heaven. So we had the Stoics and the Epicureans. And they practiced uh, self, uh, self-flagellation as well. And they were basically monks. They, they were like monks, basically. They lived a very a very uh, Spartan life, all right? And they were disciplined. That's good. But it still can get you into heaven. You just learn control of your body. You just learn how to direct your thoughts and train your mind. Amen? Which is good. This is all good. Actually, that's in the Bible. We need to control ourselves. We need to watch our thinking. As a man thinking his heart, so is he. But that still couldn't get you into heaven because that by itself didn't satisfy the righteous indignation and the righteous anger of a holy God. Alright? Your standards cannot do it. Flesh cannot enter into heaven. Flesh cannot, cannot, cannot obtain heaven. This flesh will die. This flesh will perish. This flesh cannot go into heaven. This flesh has to die off. It is, by extension, a fallen thing from a fallen world. And because of this flesh, the devil knows it. The lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. These are three things that the enemy uses to get to us, saints. And God, through his son, Jesus Christ, came and died and rose again and defeated all of these things. We are without excuse. Amen? Because God, by his power, has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that you need, God has made a provision for it. But we are lazy. We are lazy. We all... We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have messed up. No one can point finger at no one. We all are a work in progress. We all need to claim glory. We all need to come to the cross and say, Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Remember the self-righteous uh, Sadducee or Pharisee? They say, I'm glad I'm not like that sinner. Look at him, that sinner crying right there. You know, I'm not like that sinner. All right? But the sinner saying, I can't even look to heaven. Oh God, have mercy upon me. I can't even look to heaven. I've sinned against you. Please, I can't even look to you. And the Lord said, who, who you think receive real pardon? Who receive uh, the blessings of the Father? Hmm? 
Who do you think would enter into heaven? The same one who says, I can't even look at you. Have mercy upon me. I've messed up. I've screwed up. I, I've done things wrong, Lord. I, I've, I've missed you. All right? I missed the mark. I missed the target. I missed the bull's eye, Lord. I, 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 can't, I can't seem to get together, Lord. Have mercy upon me, Lord. I know I deserve your wrath, but Lord, Jesus, help me. Same thing David said when the play came on. You know, Satan tempted him to number the children of Israel. And he went and numbered them out of pride. And judgment was set against him. And when he saw what the destroying angel was doing, he says, Lord, have mercy upon them. They're just innocent sheep. They're foolish sheep. They didn't deserve this. It's me. It's me, it's me oh Lord. It's me, oh, I am the one. He said, I did this because the Lord killed 70,000. All right? For numbering the children of Israel. Amen? Numbering army. Pride. It was Satan that tempted him to do this thing. And so when we call upon the mercy seat and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, please. I deserve death. I deserve judgment. I deserve, I deserve worse. You know, I, I, you know, it's like I'm no different from that serial killer who's out there doing those things because I am seeing for the same way. I'm seeing the same thing. That man who's begging out on the street, you know, that's how we come to God sometimes. We don't even recognize it. We must scorn that beggar or that, you know, that, 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 that person who lives on the street. We must look, at, look down on them. We must say it. But in our heart, we're judging them. And yet, some of us look the same way when we come to the Lord. Amen? And yet, He has mercy on us. We need to get back to that place where we look out for our brothers. Christ died for His bride. And yet, we spurn and scorn and talk about each other. We fight against each other. We war against each other. And many times, I had to go and say, I'm sorry. I apologize. If I've caused or done you something wrong, maybe it's inadvertently. I ask forgiveness. Please forgive me. Hey, I didn't understand. Maybe... This was taken out of context. Maybe that's not what was said. All right. Sometimes people twist your words. Sometimes people only tell you what the person said. They don't tell you what they say, mind you. They cause trouble. Amen. Stir up trouble. And so we have to live a life of repentance. Amen. And forgiveness. Amen. Live a life before God. Don't worry about man. Forget about man. Live the, live the life that God wants you to live. Amen. Live the life because he paid for it by his death. Amen. He paid for it by his death. And he wants you, he wants you to represent him at the highest level. Amen. He wants you to represent him to your family and friends. You know, sometimes our family and friends look at us and say, they're Christians. Man, why are they so mean? You know, why are they still the same way they are? You know, why are they, why are they, why are they just like that? And they're watching you, you know. And they say, you know, why is he no change with you? So you have to be an example, amen, of this precious gift that was given to us. Amen. Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. God loves you. God cares for you. He died. Let me tell you something. He died to give you power to trample over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, according to Luke 10 and 19. And his blood, his blood is a terrifying weapon against the adversary. It's a terrifying weapon. And so the enemy has done everything in his power to destroy the efficacy of the blood of Jesus and take it out of our out of our lingo, take it out of our culture. Amen. So now we hardly say it. We say the name of Jesus Christ, but we don't use the blood. Amen. And Lord help us because what is coming upon this earth, God, we can need the blood. We can need your resurrection power. Lord, keep us and preserve us from what the enemy is bringing upon this earth. Make a way of escape for us through your resurrection power. And because you are risen, we could shine and we could be partakers in the divine nature. Because you've you've won many. You've won many by your death and resurrection. Amen. You've won many. There are many that are serving God. There are seven thousand who have not bowed their, their knees to bail. Amen. There are seven thousand that have not bowed their knees to bail. Because God is not finished with you yet. There's a resurrection power. Is still working in you, perfecting you. Amen? He's still changing, restructuring, reworking, revamping, revising, restoring things in your life. And your book is not finished yet. Your book is still risen because of the resurrection power of the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Today, um, thank you, Jesus. I know that God is about to do something for you. Amen. I won't stay on much longer. 
The blood can speak. Always remember, the blood can speak. The blood can hear. The blood can cry. There's life in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel, according to Hebrews 12 and 24. The blood of Jesus Christ restores, cleanses, covers, protects. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ has a resurrection power. Say with me. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ has a resurrecting power. It has the power to protect, to cover. It has the power to speak. And it has the power to cry. It has the power to hear. The blood hears and speaks. The blood is able to cover you. The perfect sinless blood of the Lamb is the perfect and once and for all sacrifice. Amen. He was on the altar of the Lord and yet he opened not his mouth like a sheep led to the slaughter. He opened not his mouth like an oxen led to the slaughter. He opened not his mouth in front of Pilate, in front of the Jewish uh, the Jewish uh, leaders of the day and over the mob that called him Messiah, Messiah, then said crucify him, then said the blood said so let let the let his blood be on our children's head. Don't you know that? You see why the Jews were suffering so much and they went through all kinds of things? They said that, you know. They said, let his blood be on our head. You know, Pilate's wife said, listen, don't mess with that man. Say, I've suffered terrible things because of him. I've suffered terrible things because of him. Do not have anything to do with him because he is a just and righteous man. That man has caused me to have sleepless nights. I don't want anything to do with him. Recruit yourself of this case. He tried to. He tried to recruit himself. He said it to Herod. Herod bounced him back. Amen. And then he said, "Crucify him." Then, all right. He tried to get. He tried. He tried to free him. You know. He said, "You know, there's a certain time of the year we can lose a prisoner." All right. One could go and one could come. They said Barabbas, who was a murderer and a killer. They said, "Set Barabbas free." Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? The King of Glory, come to die for you, shed on his blood. All right on this cross. Heal everybody. Feed the 5,000. Alright? Showed you compassion. Because he was moved with compassion. The Bible says, and he healed all of them because he was moved with compassion. Yet, they chose to loose a prisoner who was a murderer and who was uh, a killer. Yes, he was a murderer and a killer. Yes, he was trying to set, he was, he was a zealot, mind you. He was trying to set, uh, you know, the people free from Roman oppression. But yet, he was uh, enemy of the state, according to the Ro uh, according to the Romans, all right. Yet they choose him over Christ. Oh my God! Ah, some of you are innocent of things you didn't even do. Yet you were passed over promotion. Some of you uh, were blamed for things you didn't even do. Some of them lied on you. Some of them they assassinated your character. They failed your character. Some of them demeaned you. In so many different ways. And yet they promoted people. Who don't even deserve promotion. Over you. Took your position. Took your place. Some of them. You know. Outsmarted you. Blocked you. From getting certain permitting licenses and things. Took bread out of your mouth. To feed your family your children. And they put someone. Who isn't even worthy of it. In your place. And set them free. And yet they sent you to the cross. Can you see the injustice of it? But the Lord will right all wrongs. Amen. The Lord will right all wrongs. I guarantee you today, guys, God has shifted you today. God is about to turn it around for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Someone is about to get set free. Someone is about to cry out to the Lord. Someone is about to be delivered from cancer. Someone is about to be delivered from cancer. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ has rejuvenation power. Do you believe that? The blood of Jesus Christ has rejuvenation power. It has reviving power. The blood of Jesus Christ is reviving you. The blood of Jesus Christ has sustaining power. It is sustaining you. It has salvation power. It can save you to the uttermost. But you have to make the decision to call upon the name of the Lord. You can lead a horse to water. But remember, you cannot force the horse to drink. He has to make the choice. If you have not made the Lord your Savior, you need to make a decision now. Because time is running down. And you are under conviction. You know that you are not where you are supposed to be. You know you've drifted from the Lord. You need to say, Lord, I surrender to you. I don't know what to do anymore. I've tried everything. I'm giving it to you. 
I'm giving that situation to you. I'm giving that husband to you. I'm giving that wayward child to you. I'm giving that that sickness to you, Lord. I've been to every medical doctor on planet Earth and they all tell me the same thing, Lord. And I know that I'm in your hand once again. And God, forgive me, Lord. Let me not be like Asa. Asa had known the power of God, yet he went to other doctors. He went to the doctors of Baal. And God said, the prophet said, you will not rise out of this bed because you've been to me before, I've healed you before. Why are you going to seek from these medical doctors that practice Baalism? All right? You will not surely rise out of this bed. You will die because you did not consult the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let us consult the Lord. Let us consult the Lord. Listen, the blood of Jesus Christ has redeeming power. It speaks better things than that of Abel's. Amen? Abel's blood was shed by his brother Cain. All right? And his blood was crying out to the ground for justice. Amen? The Lord told, I mean, God told it to, to Cain, you know? Your, your brother's blood is crying out to me. The blood can speak. The blood can cry. The blood can talk. Hallelujah. We've all practiced. We've all been Cain at some point in time in our life. Only the blood of Jesus Christ makes us different. Only the blood of Jesus Christ separates us. We can't even think we're better than nobody else. There's some people who even want to say good morning to you. They want to say hi to you. They're only flesh walking around with, with a breath in their nostril. Amen? Alright? At any moment, God can, turn the, God can take the, uh, pull the plug. Let us now rejoice and enjoy and love one another. Stop being mean, disgusting. Stop being a Scrooge. Alright? Stop looking like you're drinking lemon juice every morning. Be kind. Be courteous. Show a smile to someone you don't know what they're going through. If you have the resurrected power of God and you know that he raised from the dead, then you don't have to worry about nothing because God has you. But we need to be mindful of that. Sometimes we get so distracted by the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And when trouble comes and when uh, hard times come, we, we end up leaving because the seed has not been buried deep in the ground and the birds of the air came and picked it up. That's the enemy. The enemy comes to steal the word out of your heart. That's the bird flying right there. Amen. Birds represent in the realm of the spirit. They represent demonic powers. Amen. Sometimes they represent messages of God. But for the most part, they come to steal the word. Amen. They, they rep represent Satan too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. I think that, that's it for today. I want you guys to think on that. Reflect on that. Amen. Reflect on what he's done for you. Tell him thank you. Praise him for a little while. Worship for a little while. Let him know you appreciate him. You know, this should be every day, but on this day, we just commemorate him anyhow. Amen? It should be that every single day. Every day should be a day where you just, you know, just love about God and tell him how much you love him and appreciate him and worship him and give him the honor that's due his name. Amen? Give him the honor. Show him respect. Amen? There's nothing, there's nothing worse than disrespect. Amen? Particularly when, you know, you've earned it and you've done them good. When they throw, uh, uh, they slap you in the face for the good you've done. Have you ever been slapped in the face when you've done someone a solid? Have you ever been slapped in the face when you've been there for them and showed them nothing but kindness and showed them you on their, their team and they turn around and they begin to mash you up and and and, and, and just destroy uh, any any type of uh, relationship you would have had with them because of all of their all of their this betrayal, all right, and accusations. Know that God loves you. God cares for you. God is a desire to take you to another level. God is designed to heal you in every area, but you have to be real with God because you could trick yourself, you could even fool yourself. But at the end of the day, remember, you still have to live with you. Sometimes the best thing you can do is say, God, here I am. I'm struggling in this area. God, I know I'm struggling in this area and I try to lick this thing and I want to lick this. I don't want to be like this, Lord. Help me, please. Your resurrection power is able to help me. And sometimes you won't feel nothing. It will seem like nothing happened, but then you'll notice that, you know, I have the desire no more. I have this craving no more. You know, it's been a week now and I haven't even touched that thing. Because you don't even know when you were saying that God is already working on it for you. Because His resurrection power is there. Amen? And that is the reason for the season. If He's not risen, then we need, we need to go play baseball and fix cars or do whatever we do. But because He's risen, we are all men most blessed. Amen? Because of the resurrection power of God. And because we cling to that by faith. And by faith, we believe it and we appropriate it. We appropriate the resurrected power of God. And that's why the enemy is after your faith. He's after the word of God in your life. He's after the call of God in your life. He wants you 
to doubt God and doubt that the resurrection ever took place. He wants to make you believe that it never happened. It was a fable. And that's why God has to bring the inner witness. You have to know it within because it will be tested. Amen. It will be tried. So you have to start up and you have to trust God that he's brought you this far and he'll keep you. Amen. He'll sustain you. There are so many people they have come so far, serving God for 60 years, 50 years. At the end of the day, doubt that God even existed. Can you imagine? Huh? Married for 30, 40 years, then you decide you want to get a divorce? Stick with God. Huh? Where are you going? Where are you going? Work it out. Amen? Let God finish doing what he's doing. Amen. God bless you. This is a wonderful book we wrote many years ago. Uh, well, not many, but this is three or four years ago, I think. It's called The Blood of Jesus Christ is a Weapon. Amen? It is a very powerful book, very simple book, but there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Releasing the blood of Jesus Christ as a weapon. The resurrection power of God flowing into your life. It's a very it's a very good book. Amen? And we sometimes forget the weapon of the blood. Amen? We don't use it because Satan is terrified of it. He's terrified of a man who knows, who knows the value and the worth of the blood of Jesus Christ and what is done for him. And as a weapon, it is the most terrifying weapon to witches and warlocks and all those that would come against the body and the man of God. Amen? So, if you guys haven't got it yet, I need you guys to pick up a copy ASAP. Amen? Because it is a very awesome book. And it was a labor of love. Amen? And I believe you guys will see some things in there that will really help you to appropriate the blood of Jesus Christ and His resurrected power. Amen? So God bless you guys. I love you all. And uh, if you've not shared this yet, I need you guys to share it. Share it, share it for me, please. If it's been a blessing to you, I need you guys to share it. Don't be like that, amen. Don't be, don't be, don't be selfish. Please share it, amen. Like my friend said, don't be stingy, all right. Don't be stingy. Please share it, all right. Post it on the page, amen. And death, let it be a blessing. That's how a lot of people got blessed. That's how a lot of people got delivered. Someone shared a video with them, amen, and they said, "Wow, you the prophet, man. Listen, I didn't know that this was like that, and that's like that, and that's what we're going through. It's exactly what I'm feeling, man. Every word you said, you were speaking to me." Just from a teaching, because someone decided to share it. Amen? Alright, because you're helping. You will become an agent of change when you share it and when you when you post it for people to see it. Amen? Don't be afraid to post it on your page, you know, because someone is watching it. Forget what they're saying. Alright? Let them see that you really mean business. Amen? Be a, be a stud agent. I see people have on the page all kinds of nice platitudes. But when it comes to the spiritual warfare teaching, they don't want to put nothing up there like that. They almost like they're afraid for people to know that they're really believers. And God has given them an opportunity to not be ashamed of him. He says if you're ashamed of him in front of men, he will be ashamed of you in front of what? His heavenly father and the angels. Amen? Don't be ashamed. He died. He was beaten beyond recognition. Died a horrible death. Went down into the belly of the beast. You hear me? Horrible Horrible, sinless man. Didn't have to do this. And he did it for you anyhow. You can't just share a video. You can't just be a blessing to someone. You can't put it on your page. Who are you trying to impress? Amen? Be the change that God wants you to be. Amen? Something you're waiting for people to change, you change. Nothing is going to change until you change. You be that change. When you change, the whole world will change. When you change, your enemies will change. <laughs> They will leave you alone because you've outgrown them. You've changed. Amen? You need to change within. Amen? Let God do the inner work of transformation and metamorphosis on the inside of you. And once you change, you would have grown past that. You cannot change things by simply beating and fighting all the time. You change by not choosing to fight but to move away, to walk away from it. Amen? Yes. Walk away from some relationships. You don't fight the person in the relationship. Just walk away from it. And block them. All right? Take them off social media. Don't fight them. Tell them, listen, this is why I'm doing this. I'm blocking you because this is what happened. All right? I'm coming to you and confronting you and saying, this is what I heard you say about me, and I don't like it. But if you didn't say it, give me a chance to hear. All right? Let me hear your side. All right? Then that's cool. But in the meantime, I'm going to have to block you because I feel like this is what the deal was. Blah, 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 blah. All right? Yes, it's that same spirit. Amen? There are many narcissists that are saying they're Christians too. And so they're right out there scamming people, but they're really wolves in sheep's clothing. I mean, that's what a narcissist is. A narcissist really is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Alright? 
and they come to take advantage of the bride. They come to take advantage of the fool. And many of them know how to pick the target. Amen? And they drain you. Drain you. But the resurrection power of God, once you raise that shield, amen? Once the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up that standard, amen? And will keep you and preserve you. So anyway, God bless you guys. I love you all. And I'll see you real soon, amen? God bless you. Amen.